It's Easter's ultimate mystery. Virtually all scholars agree that Jesus of Nazareth lived in the first century, preached about the kingdom of God, and was crucified. But what happened next is the most controversial issue of history. Did Jesus rise from the dead and thus authenticate his claim to being the Son of God? Or is this a stuff of legend and mythology? For Christians, everything hinges on the resurrection. And today, we're going to debate whether there's sufficient evidence to back it up. Joining me is Tim Callahan, religion editor of Skeptic Magazine and author of Secret Origins of the Bible. And Dr. Gary Habermas, who's considered one of the world's leading authorities on the resurrection. He chairs the philosophy and theology department at Liberty University, has written several books on the resurrection, his most recent being The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus. Well, Tim, let me start with you. Uh, in your book, you suggest that the resurrection of Jesus isn't original at all, but it's merely a story that was recycled from earlier mythology and mystery religions. You specifically in your book mention the stories of Osiris, uh, Adonis, and Addis. Uh, could you explain what all this means? Well, the resurrection uh, is, again, there were death and resurrection stories uh, uh, going all the way back, as you said, to uh, Isis and Osiris, and uh, usually in Dionysus, in, uh, in out of the Greek mythology, became uh, he had his own separate cult, and uh, in all of these, they die an excruciating death of some sort. Uh, Dionysus is torn to pieces and eaten by the uh, Titans, uh, and then they uh, arise physically from the dead. So you're saying that uh, the Jesus story then is just a recapitulation of this earlier mythology. Well, not necessarily exactly a recapitulation, but I, I think that uh, basically uh, the evidence for it is lacking. Okay. Uh, Dr. Habermas, what's your response to that? Let's take Adonis. Adonis is probably the ancient god for which we have the clearest data that he was raised from the dead. We have four accounts that Adonis was raised. The earliest one is the second century AD. The other ones are between the second and fourth century AD. The earliest account we have for Addis is the third century AD. And while Isis and Osiris, as a religion, was definitely pre-Christian, there is no resurrection in Isis and Osiris. Uh, Osiris in particular is not raised. Okay, Tim, how do you respond to that? I would point out that uh, oftentimes uh, the only copies of the myths we have are quite late as far as writings go, but quite often we have uh, some evidence of the myths in the form of uh, pictures on vases of the of the various mythic uh, characters in the situations of the myths, so we can be pretty sure that they were being told orally a lot earlier. Go ahead, Dr. Abrams. If we're talking about stories on vases or in other reliefs, there is still no resurrection. There are no resurrected gods for which we have influence, for which we have data prior to the second century. Is like this I a, said, an objection, um, Gary, that you get a lot from scholars, that this is uh, the origin of the resurrection of Jesus is somehow uh, based on or influenced by these earlier mythologies? Well, I've done a count recently of about 1,200 sources on the resurrection, everything published since 1975 in German, French, and English. And I went back and I looked, how many of these scholars who hold university chairs, for example, how many of them who are not Christians, who do not hold to the resurrection, how many of them would say that in any way the mystery gods are, are a potential inspiration for Christianity? And I can count the number of skeptics on one hand. I can count them on one hand out of 1,200 scholars. It's a real minority uh, view. Not entirely. I would still say that, uh, that, that, the, uh, that it was a common idea of a dying and rising God was around before Jesus. Well, that's not what Dr. Habermas said. We, we, would, yeah. we would have to agree to disagree on but that. One, one well, of yeah, two of you isn't the, right. The point is, Tim, if you're going to hold to a dying and rising God before, before Jesus, I want to say, where's the evidence? Well, I would say, that first of all, that the myth of Dionysus probably does uh, antedate Jesus. And yes, well, there isn't specifically resurrection, uh, specifically, I'm seeing crucifixion, uh, but I don't see that that's really uh, that important a point. Uh, they all undergo a horrible, excruciating death. You're going to have to give me a, a, a date for the earliest inscription because Dionysus, I don't know anybody who thinks Dionysus is pre-Christian, not the resurrection portion. Okay, well, uh, all I can tell you is that the myth is that he uh, is torn apart by the Titans, uh, eaten, and he is uh, raised from the dead. 
Uh, what is the a, date? I don't what know. Is the the, date I don't know the date of the, as I said, of the original. Um, uh, as far as any writings we have, but I but know that the, with, with the myths, the, the Greek myths, most of our Greek myths, uh, we do have from later collections. Except we know they are from. Uh, they were told earlier because we have the vase paintings depicting them going way back in time. But the point, the question is, is there a resurrection? And since we don't have any resurrection predating the second century all the way to the fourth century, are the earliest ones, second to fourth, we can say, well, maybe there's a resurrection there, but there's no data. There's absolutely no evidence for that position. Okay, we think we've covered this about as much as we can. We're going to come back in just a few minutes, and we're going to ask Dr. Habermas to set forth the positive case for the resurrection of Jesus. So stay with us. Coming up, how credible is the resurrection? We have early eyewitnesses who are enthusiastic and willing to die for their message that Jesus appeared to them with an empty tomb.